Well, here we are on the 31st of January 2020, and today we're going to be talking a bit about small holding and slugs and snails. So there we go. Now, you can see here, look at this lovely bed here. So it's about uh, ooh, 10 metres long, I would imagine, by about 3 metres wide. And you can really see just how lovely that looks. It's all been manured, and it does well year upon year here. Some lovely beautiful stuff growing here and you know all sorts of things had lovely tomatoes last year some of you who've been viewing my channel regularly may have seen the previous uploads of the small holding here and just how lovely things look and how well it does indeed do here so really really nice and uh, hopefully it will do the same you know this coming growing season got some nice leaks there look and that sort of thing so yeah really really lovely now one doesn't want to be putting loads of effort into growing vegetables and whatever's in their areas and slugs and snails get the whole lot so I'm going to show you a little bit about um, what you can do in order to help to encourage hedgehogs into your garden which can then help to eat and consume the slugs and snails so they don't consume your vegetables so doesn't that sound amazing hedgehogs are our friends people and we do indeed want them so there we are and uh, my understanding is there's not as many hedgehogs as there once was so we need to do what we can to encourage hedgehogs now you can see here a little habitat pile okay so put a video up earlier on and you saw a little bit of a tree removal it's a dead uh, tree there and there are two more trees that needed to be pollarded there so uh, the brush has been stacked here now this is really good because what it does is it continues to attract wildlife here now doesn't that sound really really lovely so look at this heap now it looks really cool and um, you know many people are tempted you know to just go scattering around you know slug pellets and that sort of thing now uh, I'm not one to judge but um, I would imagine that this is a real nice way to go you know make a little bit of a you know a habitat pile in your garden where you can attract hedgehogs you can attract beetles stag beetles wildlife and they really really do appreciate that and it's just a really nice beautiful thing as well particularly if your habitat pile is you know stacked neatly and organized like this now i fully understand that um, you know the size of one's habitat pile has got to be in relation to the space that you've got you know if you've only got a really tiny little garden little growing area you're not going to be able to stick a great big uh, patch of uh, habitat pile like this in it i mean the majority of you are aware that uh, <laughs> i certainly don't have stacks of land so i couldn't you know have a habitat pole this size but um you know so imagine it if you just had like a little bit you know like this in your garden or whatever you know just a bit that would probably take up maybe i don't know the size of a little barbecue something like that and if you do it nice and neat you know you can attract all sorts of wildlife you may not get hedgehogs uh, you may well do. Um, one of my understandings about, um, you know, one reason why hedgehogs are having difficulty, I think, is because in sort of like modern day gardens and fences and that sort of stuff, you know, because whereas in the past many people would have had hedges in between gardens, um, you know, to segregate boundaries or whatever, they've now got a lot of uh, fences because they are lower maintenance. People are very, very busy these days and all that jazz, and you know, that, that's how things are. But uh, I've understood that uh, they're now making things like gravel boards with holes in so that hedgehogs can move from garden to garden because, of course, they need to be able to do that, you know, for food and that sort of thing. So, yeah, really, really, you know try and do what you can to encourage hedgehogs because they do eat slugs and snails and they're also incredibly cute and lovely aren't they I mean I remember when I was a kid you know you'd see a hedgehog walking along the street at night bowling along in all of its glory you know and um, you just don't see that that often nowadays do you so if you have a little bit of a chance you know to make a habitat pile you know let's say you've got a large garden and um, you do a little bit of clearance or you get someone in to do a little bit of clearance and maybe other than having it you know um, pristine you know maybe just consider consider having a little bit of an area for wildlife so all sorts of things you know you know you might even get birds nesting in it you know that would be lovely as well they really appreciate that birds hedgehogs stag beetles you know just so so much and um, i think it can be you know nice in this sort of 
urban scape that uh, many of us see from day to day. Just a little bit of rustic beauty. Yeah, so these compost bins, you know, you can see there's leaves here as well, the old vegetable waste and all that sort of thing. But uh, a lot of this compost, I'll see if I can find some for you. A lot of this compost underneath here is, uh, you know, the stuff right under is perfectly usable. I mean, some of this has, um, you know, come out the back there and that would be really lovely and uh, usable as well. So a real nice little system going on here, you know, so you've got uh, the habitat pile for the hedgehogs, um, you've got the compost bin. Over here you've got, you know, what will be or still is to a degree, a lovely veg patch already in the springs not that far away now. Yes, and this is pretty epic as well. You can see um, what we got here. So there is, uh, this needs to be set up here, the old uh, water container here. But, uh, you know, there's a water container there with water in it. And this sort of um, strawberry, I think some sort of commercial growing thing here of some sorts. But, uh, um, you know, that acts as a waterfall. And then yeah, that can be put in there so you can collect water into that. You know, just like relatively simplistic stuff that can make all the difference and a beautiful currant bush here you know we really are looking here at a really well thought out really thought out lovely plan so this here is a mature golden delicious apple tree and produces beautiful golden delicious apples now in fact there's one still on there now a word about growing golden delicious here in the UK there you go one up there now you can put I don't know if you can see that but uh, golden delicious is prone to scab okay if grown here in the uk because it generally doesn't it likes long warm and relatively dry summers okay so when you think of golden delicious you think of like you know they're grown a lot in france south of france probably um south africa places like that parts of america you know but so they can grow here the trees are perfectly cold hardy but the uh, you know the scab can be a thing i mean that really hot summer we had a couple of years ago i've been told they didn't actually have scab on them because of um you know, because it was it was their perf more or less perfect conditions for them. So that's uh, one thing to consider if you're thinking about growing golden delicious here. And we've got nut bushes here. Look, you know, it's got the old kernels already on there, or whatever you want to call them, ready to you know come into all of their absolute beautiful glory. Yeah, looking here, look, you can see a lovely collection of this is of apple trees. Um, one of these, I think, is I think if I'm not if I remember correctly, this is a discovery, which is um, an early apple, and um, there's just all sorts going on here. You know, you've got silver birch trees, and I've spoke a bit about birch tapping before, and um, you know, even in simply as when the sap is rising, you can you can make like a cut like there. And uh, you can put like an ice cream container under it or something, and you can actually like collect the birch, uh, you know, the, the lovely juice that drips down from it. So there's so much that one can get into if they wish. And here, a lovely, another beautiful apple tree, absolutely lovely. And um, got some more, all freshly mucked beds here, all ready for planting. And um, you know, what else have we got? Another little apple tree here. And we've just got, you know, there's just so much here, isn't there, really? You know. Here we go, there's another bit there, look, with the old uh, lovely, beautiful apple tree there. This is a plum, okay, nice plum tree here. All nicely pruned and ready. Here we go, this here is another apple tree. And that there, a walnut. And what else have we got? So down here, look, strawberry beds. And these produce very very well here so they're all really really nice so yeah So we'll finish this video with this absolutely lovely and beautiful um, habitat pile. Come on back into focus, lovely. Beautiful habitat pile. And, um, you know, so hedgehogs are your friend. Okay, whether you're a gardener, 
general member of the public. Now, whatever you may be, unless you're a slug or a snail, hedgehogs are your friend. So let's do what we can to encourage them and everybody out there, build a habitat pile, okay? Because they love it. And if you like my work, please feel free to like, share and subscribe. And if you wish, you can check me out on Dan underscore Home Gardens on Instagram. See you next time.